Not hearing a great deal of here. One, two, three. One, two, three. I can hear. Okay. One, two. <laughs> one, two, one, two. Well, good morning. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Well, a very warm welcome to Christ Church on this Christmas morning, and I wish you all a very happy Christmas. Happy Christmas, Jeff. Now, Sarah said on Christmas morning, we're all to wear our Christmas jumpers. So, I'm looking round, and frankly, I'm a little disappointed, <laughs> because I went to the trouble. Helen got me it. She said that this is what I need to do. I've got to show willing. So all the Christmas jumper people, can you join with me and stand up, please? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Ah, it's better than I thought. It's much better than I thought. Ah, well done, everybody. And well done. Thank you for, for not leaving me on my own. So we like to have some merriment to start our service. So uh, Peter and Jane are going to start us off. And Jane, I think, is going to kick off with how early and how far. So. Good morning, everyone. So lovely to see you. Now. <laughs> the light 
lights coming on a little bit, but not. Um, maybe I should shout. Well, good morning, everyone. I will shout. Um, actually, please see if you can get it. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do this morning is we're going to do something new. Because uh, I think Sarah was thinking, you know, how early in the morning have people got up? <laughs> this one here. Oh, I can talk to this one. Oh, yeah. It's quite loud. Okay, so what I want to know is how early the young people got up this morning. Okay? So let me see. Is anybody going to be able to tell me? Iris. Seven o'clock. Iris got up at seven o'clock. That sounds to me like a sensible time. I think I'm very impressed with you, Iris. Jack. 6.30. Tiny bit early. Can I see you, Josh and Dan and Isaac? Half six. Half six. Five o'clock. Eight o'clock, four. <laughs> well done. Is anybody earlier? Anybody earlier? Let's see that in the, in the front row. Four o'clock. What's your name? Chloe got up at four o'clock. Oh. That is completely unacceptable. <laughs> okay, next year, I want you to sleep in a little bit. Okay? All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do what we used to do, which is how far. Okay, so we want to know where everyone has come from and actually we've got some people online as well I think and I wonder if our friend Adele in Canada is there because she's probably a winner but we'll see so I'm gonna ask you all to stand up if you can please okay so if you can see Christchurch from your front door sit down okay so if you live in the great place of Orton, sit down. Okay, those like me who live in Ormskirk, please sit your bottoms down. Okay, now I'm going to be going a little bit wider. I'm going to be going to Magull. Sit down. Oh. Okay, Simmons Wood, I think so. <laughs> uh, okay, we've we'll got to Magull. Now I'm going to say, I'm going to say Merseyside. I'm going to say the whole of Merseyside. Excellent. Okay, still got some people here. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go wider than Merseyside. I'm going to go and say the great place of England. I'm going to say everybody who's in England, sit down. Okay, so I've got some people still standing. Okay, are we going to talk? I'm going to talk about uh, Ireland and Wales and Scotland. Everybody sit down. Oh, still people. Okay, now we're going to go across the seas uh, and we're going to go to Europe. But I'm going to start with... <laughs> Does not everybody sit down for Europe? Sit down if you're in Europe. Oh, we've got some extra people who've won at the back, I think. Where have you come from? San Francisco. San Francisco. Well done, you've won. Thank you. online has anybody told us anywhere where they are Adele is online she's in Canada well done oh San Francisco and Canada I've got absolutely no idea oh we think San Francisco you're still the winners I've been getting Bill see if this works hello did you get something Okay, thanks, Bill. Well, I'll start again. Did it work? Yay. Hello. Right, I've been getting told off for not having a jumper, so I brought some lights, and I think this is better than a jumper. Anyway, I'm going to do two things now. One is find out who is our youngest and who is our oldest. Now, I know that some people are itching to be the oldest. Liz Chalk, for example. <laughs> she's hoping she's in the running. Liz, you are in the running. And we've got some babies at the back that I'm really anxious to 
to talk to. So, I think we'll start with youngest first. So, I think all stand up. Becky, I'm talking to you at the back. All stand up if you're 11 or under. See, I knew you weren't that little, Becky. Right, are we all standing up who's 11 or under? Oh, if you've got somebody with you who's 11 or under, you can stand up with them. Well done, Sam. Oh, okay, let's see. Right, well, I'm going to make the ones who are older than five, they can sit down. Have I lost the, Ken the Kellys? And the Livesies, have they all gone? Right, so how many have we got? Have we got one here? Well, we'll talk to this one. Will you talk to me with my funny lights? No. Should I ask your mum what your name is? Amara. Amara, oh, that's a gorgeous name. And you've got your Christmas jumper on, Amara, as well. And how old are you, Amara? Two years old. Wow, it's exciting to be two, isn't it? Now then, I think I've got some that are younger than two. Put your hands up if you've got somebody younger than two with you. Okay, I'm going to go to the back first. I've got to do a lot of guessing here. Oh, no, there's two. Two of them. Oh, I'll be back. <laughs> Oh, hello, Auntie. Oh, here we are. These are past winners, aren't they? Well, they're not going to win today. Who have we got here? Oliver. Oliver. And Joseph. And how old are Oliver and Joseph? 15 months. <gasps> 15 months. You haven't got a sparkly jumper, have you? <laughs> Boo. Well, well done. 15 months, that beats our two-year-old. I'm going to go, ooh, ooh, hey, there's a few. Um, why did you sit down? I'm going to come to you now. I'm going to tell you off. Stand up. <laughs> right, so we've only got babies left. <gasps> oh, Sam. We'll go to the back. Hello, back. Who have I got here? Charlotte and Jacob. Wow, are you Charlotte? Charlotte. <laughs> Hello, Charlotte and Jacob. Oh, you're gorgeous. Are they twins? And what, how old are they? Ten months. Ten months. Oh, we lost one set of twins but found another set. Ten months, ten months, ten months. Sam. Who else have we got? Sam, I'm coming to you next. Who have we got here, Sam? Can I just say you've got a very soothing voice. Cause... What, is Barney? Barney's just on a poo while listening to your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sam. I remember when you were this old, Sam, in our bath, naked. <laughs> <laughs> Touché. Right, who have we got here? Barnabas. And what does Barnabas mean? It means son of encouragement. Oh, son of encouragement. Wonderful. And how old's Barnabas? Six months. Oh, six months. That's a good one. Yeah, sitting down, folks. Six months. Have you all sat down now? No. I want this one over here. I know. I know. I think that's the winner. Oh, here we are. We're going round. We're coming round. Oh, got some by the door. Can you beat six months? No. Hello, hello. Can you say hi? Say hi. 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 Oh. What's your name? This is Nora. Hello, Nora. And how old are you? She's 13 months. Oh, Nora, that's too old. <laughs> oh. Did you have a nice Christmas? Yes. I don't know whether she kissed it or ate it. I know. That 
Is that, the, is that the youngest? <laughs> it's good to have encouragement, isn't it, and help. Glad the Livesies didn't give me any trouble anyway. Right, have we only got one left standing up? Hello, you. Gosh, I remember singing a song. Oh, no, putting the microphone for you to sing. Do you remember? <laughs> Don't you? Should we do it a duo now? <laughs> no, you sure? Oh, well, what's your name? Rachel. No, never. It was Haley, actually, wasn't it? Was it you, Haley? No. <laughs> you didn't do it, Rachel, but you could do a great duo with me now. No. <laughs> I think I'd crack all the windows. Can't have that. Right, who have we got here? Romy. Romy, and how old's Romy? She's seven weeks today. Seven weeks, folks. Aww. Hello, you. Hello. Well, you've won, but there's no prize. But don't go anywhere. Right, well, there's Romy. Only a few weeks old, that's brilliant. So now we're going to do Who's the Eldest? This is where Liz gets excited. Okay, I've got to be quick. Look at this. Stand up if you're over 60. Come on, Liz Chalk. Oh, Andy, this is the first. Okay, well, some of you are going to have to sit down. S stand up if, if you're over 70. Okay, what about 75? Bye, Liz. Maybe next year. Okay, stand up if you're over 80. Yeah, that got rid of it. Oh, not too many. Oh, right. Um, um, and, um, is there only three? Can I only see three? I've got to be quick because turkeys are burning. Right. Here I come, here I come. Hello, what's your name? Colin. Colin, and how old are you? If you don't mind me asking. I'm in my 81st year, yes. 81? Hey, that was a good guess. So you're 80? Oh, well, congratulations. 80, 80, 80, and I've got two left. Oh, okay. Um, three. Oh. I'm coming back. I think I'm going to... Where's Auntie gone? There she is. Auntie, what's your name? Auntie Gay, and I'm 87. 87, oh. Oh, what do we think? 80 in one month. 80 in one month. Sit down. <laughs> it's a good try, though. Stay stood up. Oh, 87, my word. Just one more. <gasps> Hello, what's your name? My name is Irene. Hi, Irene. Would you mind telling me your age? 93. Oh, 93! <laughs> We need a picture. We'll do it later, will we? Right. I want our baby from over there to go over there. And we'll have a picture. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Peter and Jane. So today we all celebrate the greatest gift of all, the gift of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. So let's all now stand and join together in our worship as we sing two songs. My soul, my soul magnifies the Lord and from the squalor of a borrowed stable.
Thank you, Jesus. Please take a seat. Now a time for confession. 
a time when we say sorry to God for sometimes how we live. God is stable, stars and surprises, of light and hope and new life. Open our eyes and hearts to your presence in our world. Forgive our obsession with property and possessions. Forgive our compromises and narrowness of vision. Open us to your grace that we might hear again the song of the angels and respond with a song in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. So, now the exciting time for the children and the terrifying time for Sarah and I. Can I invite all the children who brought presents this morning to come up to the front? Come and show us your presents and let's see if we can identify them. Um, those on Facebook, we're just going to have a picture of a present um, just because of safeguarding reasons. But if you are online and you want to tell us what you got this morning, why don't you message in? And Helen, are you still on your phone? Brilliant. She will let us know if anybody is at home and wants to tell us what they got. That would be brilliant. Right. Bill. Right, Jeff. I know that you've been uh, swatting up on the latest toys. Go on, who are you going to ask first? Oh gosh, this looks interesting. Right. What, now, can you tell us your name first? Daniel. This is Daniel. Daniel has got... What have you got for us, Daniel? Let's have a look. Lift them up in the air, show everybody. Right, I recognise this. This is a Liverpool football. Did your dad? Did your dad like this one? He didn't. Uh, did, is this special one of Father Christmas? This is great to see, isn't it? A Liverpool football. Dad's an Evertonian. And what's this then? This looks very exciting. A metal detector. Are you going to go and look for some treasure this afternoon with your dad? Where are you going to go for, to look for some treasure? I think you should take him out in the fields across the hills and, and, and let him explore with you all and find all the treasure that's buried. That'd be really exciting today, won't it? Over to you, sir. Okay. Right, well, I'm going to start this end. So what have we got here, Serena? Little Dolly. And has she got a name yet? Natalie, can I just... Show everybody Natalie. There she is. Does she do anything? Does she cry or anything like that? No. If you squeeze her arm. If you squeeze her arm, what, she, what does she do? She drinks water. Oh. Well, you're going to be a busy girl, Serena, looking after Natalie all day. That's brilliant. Okay. Right, let's, let's skip past the Kelly and come to E8. I will come back, I promise. So, Thomas, isn't it? Thomas, lift it up. Let's show everyone what you've got. Let's see. Right, we've got a hydraulic cyborg handmade hydraulic energy, hydraulic, hydraulic <laughs> energy. It's a little bit of French there for you. <laughs> ah, so this looks very exciting. <laughs> And what does the hydraulic cyborg hand... You tell everyone, Tom. You build a hand and then you control it with like pulley things. So, tell me, what are you going to use this hand for? Use it like a hand. <laughs> that sounds like a really good idea. <laughs> Brilliant. And who have we got here? Hi, I'm Ruben. And what have you got, Ruben? I've got... Oh, it's in a fancy case, whatever you've got. Uh, Nintendo Switch OLED model. Whoa. Nintendo Switch OLED model. Now, I can, I can hear from the ooing in the crowd that that's an expensive <laughs> present from Father Christmas that needs to be treated really well. Brilliant. Well, well done you. You are a very lucky boy. Ruben, there we go. Right, we've got a very interesting little animal here. So, first of all, tell us your name. Chloe. 
And Chloe, what have you got in your hand? A guinea pig. A guinea pig? Not a real one. Oh, that's good news. That's good news. They can do a little bit of mess, can't they, guinea pigs? And it wouldn't look good in your hand. So, but what is the guinea pig actually doing? Uh, sitting on my hand. And it looks like it's eating a little bit of uh, lettuce or something, is it? This looks, uh, does the guinea pig have sunglasses? Yes, it does. So, a guinea pig with sunglasses. Does the guinea pig have a name yet? Yeah, I named it after my brother. <laughs> Which is? Rowan. Rowan, the guinea pig with sunglasses. Now, I can see a theme arriving here with football. So, we've got James with a very nice football here, a yellow one, and a water bottle with his name on, which has got looked like nice juice in. And Xavier has also got a football. And is this a new football kit? A oh, basketball. Is this a basketball outfit? Oh, wow. Very good. That's excellent. And what about the rest of the Livesey's while we're down this end? What have we got? We've got a notebook. Oh. Did you get that for Jeff and I? Can we share that, do you think? Is that, that's what I think it must have been brought for the front for. And then what about you, Naomi? Um, you've, you've got these clothes. Oh, I did actually just notice you're in matching um, outfits. So Ren got a nice dress as well. And you've got them as well. Well, it was very good of you to bring it all to share with the church, the sweets. Very good. <laughs> wow. Lots of highlighters and notebooks and sweets, brilliant. Now, Rowan, we've heard all about you being, the guinea pigs being named after you, but what have you got here to show us? Two snap bands and a, and a lip balm. Two snap bands and a lip balm. You're really easily pleased, aren't you, Rowan? <laughs> Do you not think you should put them on? Let's see how good they look on your wrists. Are they going to do anything, these? Are they just for decoration? Oh, and, and... Oh, I see. Don't do it too hard. And how are your lips this morning? Are they okay? Do you need to put any on? No, we're all right at the moment. That's good to hear. Okay, Josh, what have you got? A Bluetooth speaker. A Bluetooth speaker. Wow. So you're going to be in charge of the music today? No. No music today in your house. Oh. So what are you going to do with the Bluetooth speaker? You don't know yet. You've got to work it out. Now I'm going to do Iris and then you're going to come back to Isaac. Right, Iris. I don't really know what this is called. Don't really know what this is called. Mum, do you know what this is called? Well, it's very nice, very colourful. Oh, yeah, it does smell. Nice, okay, whatever that is. Answers on Facebook if anyone knows what that is. There we go. Oh, right, a dog that does this. It walks. Very good. Well, that's a very novel little toy, isn't it? Well done, Iris. Right, we're excited to know what's in this box. Last but not least, hey, Isaac. Come on, let's see then. What have we got? Got an Everton kit. No, not an Everton kit. It isn't, um, uh, it's pink. Pink kit. Do you know that Everton wear pink now? Hey, that looks really smart though, doesn't it, Isaac? I think you, is it gonna, have you tried it on yet? Gonna fit. What else have we got in here? Football boots. You a footballer by any chance, Isaac? Look at those. Adidas. Uh, what type are they? Adidas. Adidas. Uh, no, they're not end plastic waste. Yeah, they are. Adidas. They're the special ones, aren't they? These are guaranteed to score goals. Are you a goal scorer? Yeah. Are you a defender? Goalkeeper? Goal scorer. These are midfielder, attacking midfielder. These will guarantee to score goals, I can promise you. That's good. Well done. Well done, Father Christmas. Anyone else want to reveal the Christmas presents? 
okay, we've got to go and see, got to go and see, because just because they didn't want to come up and see us. Oh, is that a, a fuggler? Oh, it's lost a teeth. Oh, the real teeth. Oh, it's lost, lost a tooth. And they're actually real, real teeth. Ooh. And what, and we another football. Oh, from Qatar, from the World Cup. Oh, very exciting, well done. And are you hiding yours? A gong. It's a gong, everybody. Just to, for the older people in the audience that have never heard of these things, like me. It's a cracking gong, though, isn't it? Hey? Quite heavy. Quite heavy. Really good. Really good. Anything else? Is that it? Are we done? I think we're done, sir. Yeah. Well, what we're going to do, yeah, let's give them a clap. Right. Hang on. Guys, will you stay up at the front and help us sing? Because we thought, actually, we always talk about the presence that we've received, but we tend to forget that actually the best present is Jesus. So let's sing together, Away in a Manger. And if you guys will help me at the front, do you fancy having a sing of Away in a Manger? Yeah. Iris will do it, I know she will. And the Livesies. Are you up for that? Yeah, singing? Great, let's sing Away in a Manger together. So we should give them all a round of applause. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So can I invite Obina, Blessing, and Celine up to light our fifth candle? The fifth candle obviously signifies the birth of Christ. So who's going to light and who's going to speak to me? You go and speak first. So. And right, right before and then the one in the middle. Push that. Okay. We lit the first candle to pray for hope. We lit the second candle for peace. We lit the third candle to pray for joy. We lit the fourth candle to pray for love. Now we light the Christmas candle and we rejoice that Jesus is born. He is hope, peace.
peace, joy, and love for all the world. A Savior is born to us today. Alleluia. Lord Jesus Christ, you bring the life of God into the world. Fill us with your light, now and always. Amen. Amen. Lovely. Now, if you could stay there, the only way to get these guys to come to the front was I had to ask them to do the candles because we're very sad to announce that it is actually the last day that Abina and Blessing and Salim will be with us as a family. They're going to be moving in the new year to up north to Sunderland and to Northumbria area. Blessing will be remaining with us a little while longer to finish her studies at Edge Hill. But Celine starts a new school in January and Abina his new job. And we have just been so blessed to have them as part of our Christchurch family. So we wanted to present you with a few gifts. First of all, some flowers. Hopefully you can take them to your new home as well when you move in a few weeks' time. And there's also a little bag there, Trish, with a present from everyone at Christchurch and another little gift just to help you uh, as you go and start your new home. So um, we have just been delighted to have you and we're really going to miss you. We really are. It's been a joy to have you and we're really going to pray that your new home is a joyous one and new school and job and that you find a church family um, to grow with as well. So can we extend our hand out to Abina and Blessing and Celine as we say a prayer for them as they go? Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lovely family. And we pray, Lord, as they move and start their new life in Sunderland, as Abina starts his new job, Celine, her new school and blessing, finishes her studies and then goes to be reunited with them in the new year. I pray, Lord, that this home will be uh, joyous, Lord, that they will make new friends, and Lord, that this new chapter will be filled with your promises that, Lord Jesus, you have been their Jehovah Jireh and you will continue to provide for them. We ask this, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And can I now invite the Kelly family to come and lead us in our prayers? We always like to have a young family, if we can, on Christmas Day to come and uh, just help us to, uh, to pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you this Christmas that we can celebrate the birth of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, today here at Christ Church. Lord, when we marvel at your creation, the wonders of nature that were spoken into existence by you, the mountains and the seas, the stunning sunsets and sunrises, Lord, when we consider that you created the universe and its immense vastness, Lord, when we think that you are so great and awesome that even the universe cannot contain you. Lord, when we think on your holiness, how there is no spot or blemish in you, you are completely flawless and without sin. Lord, it is mind-blowing that not only that you would become a man for our sakes, but that you would humble yourself to be born a helpless babe born into poverty in an unknown family in Bethlehem, a place of no reputation or fame. We thank you today that you sent the Prince of Peace for our sakes. There is such a lack of peace around us 
both in the world and our own souls, in so never become broken many different ways. We thank you that you came to bring a peace that can never be broken, peace between you and all those who put their trust and faith in the life and death of your son Jesus who we celebrate today. The angels proclaimed good news of a saviour being born and we do the same today, thanking you for rescuing us even through, even though we didn't deserve it. Lord, as we think of the last year gone by, the passing of the Queen who reigned for so long and the inauguration of Charles, our new King, we are reminded that your kingdom is, everlast is an everlasting kingdom, one that will never fade and one that is not subject to death. Lord, as we celebrate your first coming, we long for your second coming. Each day seems seeing the brokenness and hurt around us. We cling with certain hope to your promise to make every wrong right. We thank you through your son, Jesus, we can hold to your promises. Lord, we pray for our country this Christmas. We pray for the, our leaders that you will give them wisdom to make righteous and just laws. We pray for the leaders in Europe as they seek resolution in Ukraine. Lord, we pray for those believers following Jesus under persecution and harm. Lord, we pray for our community today. For some, this is a difficult day. We pray for those who are lost, lonely, afraid, struggling with poverty or addiction. We pray for those that are far from you and without hope. Please meet with them by your mercy and power. May we see, see broken lives restored. We pray for revival in our community this coming year, that the Holy Spirit will set out in a blaze with the power of the gospel. Lord, we pray for the sick in our community. In particular, we bring to you Louise Carlton, Jan Cashin, Jill Hewitt, David Moore, and Luciana. We pray for those with ongoing health conditions. We bring to you Rick, Rick, Ricky Abernathy, Alan Boardman, Eric Clayton, Gerda Dennison, Tom Ellis, Bill Evans, Gabrielle Foster, Pat Stewart, and Bridget Wainwright. Father, we are reminded what your word says, that the same power that raises Jesus from the dead now lives in us. May our prayers be filled with that power that heals, saves, and delivers. May this bring glory to the name of your son, Jesus, who we're here today to celebrate. Amen. My turn, my turn. Thank you. Thank you to the Kellys. And Graeme, could you now bring us our Bible reading? Our Bible reading is from Matthew chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found it from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. 
After they'd heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they'd seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Graham. You're on there, Bill. See? There we go. Are we on now? Yes? Good. Morning, everyone. Shall we just pray? Father, I just pray now that the words that I speak and our hearts will be really attentive to all that you are wanting to say to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. So I wonder, how has your lead up to Christmas been? Frantic? Have you managed to find time to be still and to be quiet? Anyone been following the football or is that a, a bit of a a sore subject. We've got one or two admitting that they've seen the football. Anybody been following a particular player? No? Have you all gone to sleep on me now? Okay, let's have a look. So I was looking at who is the most followed person on social media. And here we go. Cristiano Ronaldo. Anyone want to guess how many followers you think he might have on social media? Have a guess. Shout out. How, a lot, yes. Okay, so 521 million followers on Instagram and 156 million followers on Facebook. It made me think, if Jesus was born at the time of social media, I wonder how many followers he would have been having. How many people would have been following the birth of his, uh, oh, sorry, the story of his birth. Well, our reading this morning is not normally one that you would hear on Christmas Day. It's normally shared with us in church around the 6th of January when we remember the coming of the wise men. We often, though, include the wise men in our reenactment of nativity stories, don't we? You'll often see that the wise men are coming in. In fact, in Toddlers the other week, my highlight for the toddler nativity was the three children we picked to be the wise men. They came forward with the gifts that Wendy Arthur had wrapped for them, and one of them just went, no and took the gift back and walked away. He wasn't going to leave it with Jesus at all because we know in the story of the Gospels that Jesus was actually around two years of age when the wise men actually went to visit him, which made me think that the wise men were people of perseverance. They'd been traveling a long time to find Jesus. The wise men came from Persia. They were skilled in astrology and medicine and philosophy. They were teachers Debaters, readers, thinkers, they used their intellect and their scientific questioning to help to find Jesus. And they didn't just get to him by following the star, but by a process of explanation and of studying things. Some of us this morning here may relate quite well to the wise men. We may be people who aren't just going to follow something because somebody else tells us it's a good idea. We want to follow something because we've thought through it ourselves. We've come to a conclusion and a decision that we've made up for ourselves. And sometimes when we look at the nativity story, we can think, quite honestly, it's a bit fluffy and cute, can't we? Let's take a picture of Sonny here. Sonny is uh, Eddie and Nell's um, grandson. Here he is. Have we got that picture, Eileen? And... Of course, you can understand why you would think that nativity is all about cute and fluffy. Here's uh, Sonny when he was playing his shepherd role in our toddler nativity. And yet within that nativity story, there are moments when we do simply want to engage with our heart and simply follow and be a little bit impulsive like those shepherds. They only heard the news and they were off to find the baby Jesus. Mary she simply accepted that whatever her agenda had been when that angel told her that she was going to have the baby Jesus, she accepted it. Let it be to me according to your word. 
But there are also examples in the nativity story where people grapple with things. And the wise men are very much those people. And as I say, there may be people here this morning who you've come because somebody has invited to y you to come. And yes, we've had lots of fun. But the seriousness of Christmas Day is that a vulnerable baby came to be the saviour of the world. And I love the Archbishop of York, well, the ex-Archbishop of York, John Sentimuth, quote, when the Queen died, he spoke on the national news and he said, some people think that Christianity is a crutch. It's for people who are weak. They need something to believe in. Let them go ahead. But actually, we forget that quite a lot of intellectual people, St. Augustine and St. Isaac Newton, are people who have read the Christmas story and have taken it just, just from their head, but to their heart. The wise men were people who'd realized that money and power and material things were okay, but actually it's the spiritual thing that was the most important, the things that are deeper inside of our souls. For those of us who are regular members here at Christchurch, you will know that we've been reading this fantastic book by Robin Gamble. It's called Jesus 100. And he talks in here about the wise men going to discover that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. He says, wise people look to others, but they also go and ask the questions. And that's why Jeff and I have felt a real privilege of journeying with four different groups of people this year at Hope Explores, because our go-to thing at the start of that course is don't believe it just because we tell you. Go and find and search those answers for yourselves. And I hope that if you've been invited to church this morning and you don't normally come, that you will take an opportunity, if not over the next few days, but next year, to go and grapple and discuss those things for yourselves, to understand the Christmas story. Two weeks ago, we invited all the school children into church. Mr. Kennedy is a big fan of the children learning to be still and to be quiet. And I was thinking, what can I do with particularly the junior school children? And so we played some music called Emmanuel by the Piano Guys. I wrote about this in the notices a few weeks ago. Now, it's always a dangerous thing when you ask a child, what do you think? You can come up with all sorts of answers. But I was impressed by a little year four boy. He said, you know, Sarah, as that music played, I was thinking Jesus came to change the world and to change people's lives. But not everybody wanted to be changed and not everybody followed. Some walked away. And I thought, wow, that's that moment when a child has just connected heart and head. And that's a very special moment. And I think as adults in particular, we lose that, don't we? Our children, we've cooed over them this morning. They're great. They've really accepted the heart of Christmas. But as we get older as adults, something just gets disconnected. And I wanted to really encourage us this morning to connect the head with the heart. We all have an opportunity this morning to say, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. Now, that means that you could say that, I'll follow you, but not know all the answers because the Christmas story is a mystery. And I want to encourage you this morning to be able to maybe just start on that journey. We think about the wise men. They offered him gold and frankincense and mare, costly gifts, but not as costly as what Jesus would eventually give back to them. The fact that he would die on the cross, not just for the wise men, but for each and every one of us. The best gift that we can receive this Christmas is the gift of Jesus who doesn't just come for Christmas, but for all eternity, that when we put our trust in him, we can have eternal life. And my go-to carol at this time of year is in the bleak midwinter, sums it up perfectly. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would give a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. But what can I give him, give my heart. So on this Christmas morning, I wonder what gift may you be willing to give to Jesus? We've all received gifts this morning, maybe some that we won't need, maybe some that we don't like, but let's not reject the best gift that those wise searchers found. And when they got there, they humbled themselves and bowed down and worshipped him. So each of us this morning have an opportunity to say, I will follow you, Jesus. Amen. 
Now, it's been a tradition at Christchurch for a couple of years now that we have congregation participation. So I was thinking, what song can we have today that would get everybody up on their feet and singing, but was also fitting with the message that I've just shared? And I thought, I've got a brilliant one. I will follow by Whoopi Goldberg and Sister Act. So we're going to start the singing in a moment. Not yet, let's just pause it. And in a moment, I'll ask you all to stand on your feet. The lyrics will be on the screen. And we're basically going to have a great load of fun. But it's also serious because some of us are followers of Jesus. And you can sing this as a prayer that I will follow you, Jesus. I love him. But some of us may be just wanting to make that next step. So yes, it's fun. But let's also use it as a prayer. If in your heart today you want to respond, I will follow you then this song is also for you. So let's put the video on. We need the volume up, Bill. Okay. And we'll say, take it away, Whoopi. I've got my helpers, have I? Stand up. Are we ready? And a bit of dancing is obligatory as well. Are we ready? Let's, uh, let's all join together. Let's worship today. Let's worship the newborn king with O Come All Ye Faithful.
blessing, just a reminder for those regulars who come to the 1045 service, there's no 1045 on New Year's Day, just a nine o'clock communion only. So let's finish with a blessing. And this blessing comes from Lectio 365 today, written by Pete Gregg. And so may the extraordinary love by which the Father sent his Son at Christmas embrace our family, our friends, our hearts and our homes this day. Maybe the astounding sacrifice by which Jesus was born in Bethlehem mark all our attitudes, actions and interactions this day. And may the irrepressible joy by which the Spirit conceives and breathes new life fill us with the holiness of heaven, happiness now and forevermore. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Friends, have a wonderful Christmas day. Happy Christmas, everyone.